Today I'd like to focus on teacher administration and particularly looking at the data dashboard which has just been introduced into Purple Mash. The data dashboard helps the teacher to see the work that had been done. It also allows you to get into the marks. You can also see the rewards that you've given. The rewards are equivalent to the stars that one would find in the children's exercise books. But let's get started now. I just wanted to show you how to dig down into the content and you can use this filter button and there you can see all the different grades, the years and you've got the filter by subject as well. So I'm going to tick over here and year two and you can see as I click on these little check boxes, it's filtering the content to be suitable for your year group. So a teacher would use that to find the content that is most applicable to the year group. Again, a lot of Purple Mash's tools can be used across all the year, year groups. It's a very versatile tool, but if you're really looking to find something, you can use that. Now this is the to-do section, and if you click on there, the blues, blue is showing work that I've allocated for children, and you can see it's indicating that these are for grade twos, and there's the search button. If I type in grade seven, you can see it's now filtered out all the other grades and I've got these TikTok challenge and superheroes as two activities that are allocated to be done by grade sevens. Now let's go to the data dashboard. I'm going to dig down into the tasks I've set, superheroes, and here you can see I can find the class that I'm looking for and I'm going to scroll down and go to a grade seven class, seven B, okay. And you can see that here I have all the grade seven B's with the time taken on that particular activity. So if I click on this, I can click on scores and there you've got the results. And how easy is that? And you can export the results in Excel. Let's go to another one, TikTok challenge. And you can see that's a different activity that I've given. And you've got the scores. I can go to all and it shows all the different results, time taken, and all the other different measures in an activity. So the data dashboard's found up there, and you can see I've, each one of these are showing the different sections in the to-dos, the tasks in Purple Mash. And here you've got the scores. You can look at the different areas of Purple Mash and dig down to look at any activities had been done and these weren't actually given by a teacher they're just activities that the children might have done in their own time so I'm having a good look through that and here you can see there's four or five learners that have done this activity called bond bubble sequence snake has also got a few factoroids Noah's done wonderful learner this is somehow equivalent to a teacher's mark book though a lot more effective and it gives a lot more than what would normally be in a mark book there's the rewards if you click on that a teacher could allocate different rewards as you and these are shown in the children's profile as the children interact with purple mash they will collect these rewards they're a wonderful motivating factor and here's the home screen you can see the data dashboard found over here so if i click it that's where you're going to get it Your to-dos are found over here. If they're in blue, that would indicate that it's still active. You can see that this one's got due in four days and repeats every week. And that's something that's really exciting and I'd like to show you that. If you set a to-do, and I'm gonna do a coding activity. So I'm gonna go to tools and I'm gonna choose one of the coding activities which I found over here, you'll find your various subjects easily if you get used to it. And I'm gonna give this Newton and the Apple to a grade six class. So I'm launching the app, I'm just gonna have a look at it, and you'll see that it's got five challenges. Now normally one would go through this and look at it and see a little bit into the activity. But now verify that it's acceptable for your class you'd go and click on the icon, set as a to-do. Read an instruction for the children. They would hear my voice when they open the, open the activity. And I'm gonna say, I'd like you to try this activity. This is going to be the first time you are doing this activity. 
and I write done. Now that wasn't a great recording, but if I go next, it'll give me the date that I'm going to give this. Today is the 25th, and I could go to the 30th. And an interesting new feature is that you can allocate whether it's to be done anytime. That means they could do it anytime at their own choosing. Is it to be done at school or is it homework? Is it to be done at home? And these can be done, this can be done with any of the other activities. Now you go to next and we can choose the classes. I could scroll down to any individual in my in our school, like for example, these particular individuals. But if you want to give it to A class, and we'll go with 6A, 6B, 6C, and 6D. And we can press set to do. Now, if you go back, I have something I didn't show you and I want you to emphasize is this to do repeats. If you have an activity that's going to be, re be repeating weekly or repeating every two weeks, you can set that. And very often these are certain activities that need a little bit of drill work when you feel that the learners need to go over it time and time again to consolidate on the knowledge, you would use these three options. Wonderful. The, the, this is all rather new. So I'm going to make this every two weeks, the Newton and the Apple activity will, will come again for the learners to do. And I'll just designate when I want that to stop. So we've got 6A, and I'm going to choose 6B, 6C, and I think you can already see that I could have chosen individual, individual children too. Set to do, and it says the to do has been set. I can close it, and I have set an activity for the children to do. Now you can do this with mathematics, English. Afrikaans a little bit difficult because there isn't much content here, but you can build your own activities and the interesting thing is that some of the activities even have the ability to take in marks. For instance, there was a quiz activity and I'd like to show that to you. Just to find it. But it was a marvelous activity in the sense that to quiz. This one in one of my earlier videos does show you how to make a quiz. Different activities, labeling, multiple choice text entry, grouping and sequencing. You've got, got to have a good look at it and you'll see that it can allocate marks and it can even help you when you do marks. Text toolkit as well. There are so many that are could be test orientated and many that could be even linked up to project work. And here we got two email and this is pretty new to the kids at our school. They're starting to use it and very excited about the idea that they can email anybody within the school environment. One of the most exciting things too is being able to get marks. And I did kind of emphasize to quiz as being a mark getter, but anything in Purple Mesh has some sort of mark allocation. And if you're looking at moderation and the whole idea of bringing that into your assessments, that when you experiment and you do a little bit, a bit of creative work, you can use it very effectively. Some shared blogs, and you can see here's the coding group blog, the Brian Evan campaigns, and here's a technology blog. I haven't really looked at the children that put anything on, but blogs and dashboards are wonderful to just show the children's work in here. And these can be also used to get collaborative work and you get the children to give you feedback. We have games. You'll have to just construct a blog according to your own particular need. And you can see as games that the children at our school have made. I can just click on one of them and it'll open the game. It's called Good Luck, this one, I think. Iris did this. Open the game. So let's have a look. And she's made this game, which... Let's have a look. Okay, so one, it's a 3D game that you can navigate. Iris, not sure which grade she's in, but looks pretty good. Obviously, you've got to bump against certain things and get scores. Even this can be linked up to schoolwork. You might think that I'm just trying to show for the little bit of coding, but that's not really the case. What you can do is structure these shared areas to suit your subject and your grade. And it's wonderful for parents to interact with. 
but you've got to explore it and you've got to see what it can do for you. It's, and I, I can only see any teacher that does a little bit of homework looking through it as becoming quite enthusiastic individual, knowing what it can do for their teaching. Here you've got 3D aspects. I'm just going to show you some of the interesting things. And this links into grade five, six and seven mathematics where they're looking at 3D objects. And these can even be printed out with a 3D printer. And you've got these little toggles that you can shape and you can look at your model in a 3D structure. Top view, side view. And you can even do screenshots of these in tests and make it very interesting. And there over there is printing an STL file to print it as a 3D object. Some of the maths teachers, you can look into data handling and looking at the so if you look at north korea you can see it's got a population of 24,983,205 a little bit smaller than south africa and all of these can be linked up into graphs you can see the different continents Can even turn on collaboration let's have a look at the other one and here you got we have quizzes an alien database we launch the app you can see it which aliens have two eyes and live on the moon and these are linked into the database what you do is you would structure a database and the learners would find the information from looking at the data in the database so if you went back Let's go back and we went and looked at the aliens over here, aliens, choose the aliens. And you can see that we have fields, I is one, planet Saturn. These aliens live on different places and they have different characteristics and you would be able to graph it and structure it. And then this would form the basis of that other activity where they would look at the information in the graphs and all the data and they'd even use a database one is to explore it if you're a maths teacher in grade six or seven i think even grade fives could do this and i cannot see why it can't be used in a assessment sense i hope that this video has given you some sort of interest to explore purple mash and start using it i'd like to just thank you for watching this video and i'd like to urge you to subscribe and to share Thank you. You're welcome to come and see me if you'd like to learn a little more and get more into Purple Mash. You're also welcome to contact me and I will try my best to help you.